This is the Daily Growth Discipleship Podcast. I'm Chris Lamberth. And I'm Josh Havens. We're on a journey to learn what it means to live a lifestyle of discipleship. We're glad you're joining us today and hope that as you set aside this time for God, that He will help you grow today in the everyday moments of life. For the longest time, I never really considered worship as anything other than just singing songs. So far in our conversation with Dr. DeGarmo, we've, we've talked about what worship is and how to have a successful worship service. And now we're going to move into a little bit about how Bible reading and prayer can be a part of that as well. David DeGarmo has served as the provost of Global University since June of 2016. Previously, he served as the dean of the Graduate School of Theology and associate dean of the Graduate School of Theology at Global University as well. He's an experienced educator, and he's served other institutions as an instructor, chief academic officer, and president or CEO. In the past, David has spent 14 years as a lead pastor. He's also served for seven years as a minister of music and a worship leader. He has a deep interest in the topic of worship and a desire to lead the church in authentic worship, and it's really been the theme of his entire ministry. David earned a Bachelor of Music from Evangel University and the Master of Divinity from Northern Baptist Theological Seminary. He finally ended up with his Doctor of Ministry from the Assemblies of God Theological Seminary. The topic of his doctoral project was leading the Pentecostal worship service. David also enjoys reading and sports. He's married to his wife, Ruth, and they have two grown daughters, both of them accomplished musicians. As you listen to this chapter, I'd like to challenge you to think about how you can build into your life habits and routines of worship. It seems to be a center feature of this chapter as I get to ask Dr. DeGarmo about how he's implemented worshipful practices into his everyday life. And that's where we begin. But we get into a few other topics, one that I think you will really find helpful, and that is learning to listen to God. Uh, so with that, we, we mentioned, we talked about earlier that worship isn't just restricted to the song service in the church, although, it, as we've been talking about, it's so incredibly important, and for a lot of us, it's it's where it starts, it's where it has to. But I wanted to try to move on a little bit and talk about some of worship practices that you have in particular, in ways that you've been able to incorporate worship into the rest of your life. So how have you taken it outside of the public worship service? And are there any sort of daily habits or routines that you have found particularly helpful in that regard? Yeah. Um, Again, what we start, what we introduce in the worship service, we want everyone to develop outside. So for example, uh, when a past preaching is a really important part of worship, it's not separate from worship. Preaching is in my, in, Preaching, you can have preaching outside of a worship service. Uh, you might call that evangelism or whatever. But, um, yeah, you can have preaching outside of worship service. But when, when you have a – you can have preaching and teaching as an act of worship, certainly by the preacher. He's worshiping when he's preaching. But also by the people as they affirm, as they encourage him, as, as they actively listen uh, with intent to obey, that – worship right there. And so the word is one important thing that we can do as Christians. We cannot live on our pastor's sermons. Mm -hmm. We have to incorporate the word into our daily habits and routines. Um, I must, I absolutely must spend time in the word and in prayer every single morning. If I don't, um, I I just, I, I can't. It's like I forgot to get dressed yeah. that morning. I just it, it's gotten to that point in my life right now. I just ha- if I have to get up in the middle of the night to do that, I will. I just it just it's that important to me. Um, uh, prayer. We introduce the idea of praying, talking to God, presenting our praises, which are prayers, uh, presenting our needs, our requests for God's intervention. We we do that very effectively as a, as a congregation, which, by the way, I fear is becoming a lost part of worship, too, and that is mm-hmm. the, uh, and not just a glossed-over quick pastoral prayer, but the people of God engaging in prayer as a part of the corporate worship service. I need to take that, incorporate that into my personal life. As a father, 
I need to incorporate that into the lives of my children, both the word and prayer. Uh, our kids are, are out of the house now, but we incorporate that on a daily basis. We read the scriptures and have prayer every, every single morning around the breakfast table. Those are, those are things that you bring in, into your life as an example. Um, can, I, can I pause there sure. and, and dig down on that? Because mm-hmm. um, this is a, an area that I find fascinating. Again, I've got young children. Josh has young children. And, and it's an area that we're trying to really be intentional about with family devotionals. And uh, at least for myself, I didn't grow up doing family devotionals, but maybe once or twice a year, it was sort of like the, you know, it was the big push and and, and nothing against my parents, but it was just sort of like, okay, we're going to do family devotionals and it would sort of fizzle out after a while. So if you have been successful in in doing these, I want to, can you walk us through, you said at the, at the breakfast table, what might a typical family devotional look like for you guys in the morning? Is it reading through a Bible reading plan, or is it talking? Yeah. Really, really simple. It's got to be really, really simple. And I and I think, in fact, we didn't even try to be age-level specific with our kids. Like, well, let's read a Bible story or something like that. Uh, maybe we just had set exceptional kids. I don't think so. They're pretty much normal kids. But we just got out our Bibles, and we said, we're going to read this. Uh, in fact, as soon as our oldest was able to read, we started incorporating that into she was able to read with us. Uh, and not too much, you know, because especially by the time they're school age, they got to get off to school. And, and by the way, establish the pattern before, because if you wait till after school age, it's going to be really hard to corral that back in and say, oh, before you rush off to school, let's have devotions. Uh, if you've already established that preschool, it's going to be a lot easier to continue that once the kids uh, get into school. You know, one thing we found out after we were doing that, that our younger daughter, uh, she's like three years old, right? And she's insisting on being able, she wants to participate now. She's got a Bible. She wants to read. Well, but you you can't read, honey. You haven't been to school yet, right? Well, she sure can. You know, I mean, there were. I mean, she started out with these little teeny words she could read, and we would help her out with the big ones. And pretty pretty soon, she was probably reading before she entered kindergarten. She was wow. at least recognizing words on that page of her Bible. Uh-huh. You know, so uh, again, just read the scripture. It will do its job. We don't have to be smart about it and elaborate on it. Well, honey, you know what this means. You know, the Holy Spirit is very capable of doing that uh, to, to illuminating the mind of a child when they where they need to be, too. So let's read the scripture, keep it simple, uh, say a brief prayer, and uh, we've established the pattern. We've placed that, that habit, hopefully, in their hearts. How did you go about developing your own personal habits of getting into the Word and prayer every morning? Because I'm assuming... Maybe that's a false assumption, but I'm assuming that it wasn't always something that you just had to do every single morning. Oh, did... oh yeah, from the from the womb. I was... <laughs> How did no, you develop? That? And actually, I got to give a shout out to my youth my youth pastor buddy way back my my first position as a music minister on staff. My friend Ron was youth pastor. He's probably a year or two older than I, so I looked up to him uh, as a, as a bit of a mentor. And he had developed that somewhere along the line, he had developed that habit that first thing when he got into the office, which you can do when you're a staff pastor. Okay. You could come in and establish that pattern. First thing he did was spend 30 minutes in the word. I said, well, huh? (laughs) (laughs) If he's doing it, (laughs) I guess maybe I should do that too. Right. So, and then I began, well, that's a good idea. I think I'm going to do that. And you know what we found ourselves doing? And in fact, we had to start like being careful about it because we could start dialoguing a little too much about the word and our senior pastor would come in and say, uh, you guys going to get to work and get anything, anything done here? <laughs> oh, yes, sir, boss. We're just talking about the Bible. <laughs> but we would begin that dialogue. Hey, you know what I was reading this morning? This thing, I'd never really thought of it this way. What do you think about that? So that got me going. His example was was really powerful in my life, and and that created that thing, that and I was single at the time, so I didn't have a wife and family at home. I man, I just started cracking the book when I get home at night. What else am I going to do? Watch TV when I get home. So, so that began to just be 
that was the beginning of it. And, uh, and just that, those times of meeting, meeting God and his word speaking, you just don't want to miss it. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to, is it every morning this fireworks or wa- ocean of bliss washing over you? No, but there's enough mm-hmm. of, of that, man, thanks God, uh, that you don't want to miss it because this could be a, a, a morning when that little nugget of truth or that thing that God wants to speak to my heart, you know, that could happen this morning, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't want to miss that. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a cool thing that I've sort of been learning lately. And I don't know why, at least nobody ever told this to me. I think it's becoming a popular thing now, but you know, hearing you talk about it, you're talking, you're, what you're talking about is really learning to listen to God. Yes. And I think that's the most universal thing that Christians want to know is how do I hear more from God? Yet we literally have a book from God. Yes. So if we want to learn to hear from him, maybe we should start there. Exactly. In yeah, so it's, 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 you know, you're right. Every day, it's not super exciting. And sometimes when you get into Leviticus, it can get pretty dry pretty quickly. Absolutely. But what I found is at least learning to read it with helps in those parts, right? When you're, and I'm pretty adamant about reading scripture, always trying to understand what you're reading. Like if mm-hmm. you're just reading it and you're just reading words for the practice of it, although the practice of it is beneficial of just saying, you know, of establishing that routine. If you don't understand what you're reading, it's sort of just like the clanging gong and, and symbol. That's not to say don't read it. That's to say go and find out what it means. Right. Because when even some of that boring stuff in, in the genealogies, I, I'll never forget sitting in Bible college, right? And I learned what the genealogy in the beginning of Matthew means. And it's like, oh, I thought that was just a list of names. <laughs> All of a sudden. It's like the credits at the beginning of a movie. Yeah, well, that's like the catch-up story, right? It's like, if you don't know, this is what's going on through all of Israel's history, which the original readers would have understood it. Yep. So now it's like, you're right. It is a bit of a fireworks show to say, oh, this really means something. I thought that was just the the skipping portion of the Bible that you just jump, okay, let's go to Matthew 5 and we'll start with the Beatitudes or whatever. And it's like, you know, no. Exactly. This thing is really real, man. There's some stuff deep in it. And so are there any passages like that, that that come to mind when you're like maybe struggling to read and you're like, you know what? That one story I remember just stood out to me. And when I read that and I realized something was going on there, it, it really turned the lights on. And, and that's when you got that interested in Scripture and wanting to go deeper. You know, a specific passage isn't, isn't coming to mind, but I would just say this. Um, that, And I know you're a big fan of journaling, Chris. Mm-hmm. Um And that is an important piece, too. And one of the things I found that journaling helps is because early on when I tried it, and somewhat unsuccessfully, I thought I had to have something to write to begin writing. Mm. Along the way, I figured out that if I just start writing, guess what? I may end up having something to write. Uh, For example, maybe a passage like, you, you mentioned like Leviticus. Okay, for crying out loud. You know, that what is it? What does you got to sacrifice this animal upside down, and he's got to have this thing and blood <laughs> sprinkle it, and all this sort of stuff? So what does that have to do with me today? I'll, and really down to minute detail. And I, I can, I can actually quite imagine that sitting there going, "Well, what you have to ask the question: What is there for me today?" I think that's an appropriate question to ask just about every morning. Well, let's, that's, it is what it is, and there's all this historical signet. You've got to rightly interpret the Word of God and all that. But there's also a time for us to say, what am I hearing the Spirit say to me today? Mm-hmm. Now, when you're reading through Leviticus, what is the Spirit saying to me today? Well, one thing is, at least I know that God sweats the details. Mm-mm. Right? I mean, he went to all the trouble to make Moses write all this stuff down. Apparently, it matters to him that details matter to God. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one example. And the thing I found is, is I said, you know, I really, but once I start writing, you know, I don't really know about this passage. I'm struggling with this. And But just as I begin to write, thoughts start to materialize. Well, maybe 
this is what's going on. Well, if that's true, then then you find a stream of thought beginning to emerge as you begin to express that. Mm -hmm. But if you just sit there at a blank page waiting to write something, you may be sitting there all day. Yeah. And that's a good that's a good follow up because I think when we, when it comes to at least listening to God, and I know that's not necessarily the topic that we're talking about, but journaling is the other side of that Bible reading that I have found for myself so helpful in learning to listen to God. Mm -hmm. Because it is. You take a different intentionality when you start thinking about that. And I think that's an important distinction, what you just said. What is the Spirit saying to me today? Which is different. It's subtle, but it's different than... What does this mean to me? Because mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of that question. It's like, right. what does the Bible mean to me? It's like, well, it's got two thousand years of of baggage that you have to un, you know, wind to try to figure out what it means to you. It means what it means. It means exactly. <laughs> and then you have to unwind and untangle all of your own personal baggage that's helping you understand it in that way. That's right. <laughs> But to ask what is the Spirit saying to me, and what does He <clears throat> want me to take away from it, is a, a, a very different question, and I think very appropriate that we should ask every morning. And it's very not not infrequent that the passage of scripture I was reading that day becomes not the thing that God is saying to me that day. Uh huh. But as I begin to journal, then I be I'm begin to hear what the Spirit is saying to me, and it might be something way different mm-hmm. than that passage. Uh, your journaling isn't necessarily an exegesis of the passage you just read that morning, but it's beginning to express to God what you're thinking, uh, where you are, what you need, and to hear what he's saying to you. Yeah. One of the things I liked about what you said, uh, well, when you said that to kind of develop that habit of getting into the word and prayer, you looked up to your friend. Yes. Uh, community is such an important aspect of worship and formation like that. And if you struggle with trying to understand what the Holy Spirit's trying to say to you at a given moment, the community around you can be a really great sounding board as to what the Spirit's doing in your life. Absolutely. And so that that communal aspect of worship even plays into the the personal times that we have with God, both in the Word or in prayer or even journaling. If you want to open up your journal to a friend and just get a second set of eyes on what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're processing, that can be a really powerful tool for formation and worship. Absolutely. You know, and and what you said just reminds me, we we keep compartmentalizing things. You know, I'm a member of the church. I'm a member of the community when I'm sitting in my study by myself. Mm -hmm. I am still a member of the body of Christ. So I'm never really without the body. We just may not be together in that moment. You know, mm-hmm. and so there really isn't. We think in these tracks of well, there's my personal life and there's my church life. Nah, there's just your life in Christ. So today, if you haven't already, I would challenge you to begin implementing practices and habits of worship in your life. And remember, it's not just about you. Although you'll benefit from these practices and rhythms of worship in your own life. Remember, it's really not about us, but it's about worshiping God as part of the body of Christ. And if you're looking for a concrete way of going about establishing a a habit and routine, we have a tool for you that I want you to check out, and it's called the Daily Growth Journal. As we talked about in this episode, journaling is one of those exercises that will best help create a rhythm for you and help you develop a sense to listen to God. So the Daily Growth Journal is a great place to begin your journey of creating habits and routines that build a lifestyle of worship. So if you want to get your copy, go on over to dailygrowthdiscipleship.com, and you can't miss it. Thanks for listening to the Daily Growth Discipleship Podcast. If you want to stay up to date with everything that's happening at Daily Growth, Go to dailygrowthdiscipleship.com and subscribe for free. Or subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify.